right, well, I am getting ready to leave for Florida in T minus three hours. Um, I'm packed. Atlas is very curious about my luggage. Um, hey buddy, I'm, I'm not taking you with me, even if you do manage to fit in there. Now all that's left to do is um, fight against my travel anxiety. This is the first time I'm doing a solo trip since COVID. in my hotel room. I forgot to pack makeup wipes, so this is with um, a, a tissue and some water. You know what? It, it could be worse. It is currently 12.30 at night and I have to be up at 6 a.m. So I'm gonna go to bed. But tomorrow we're going to Kennedy Space Center and I'm so excited. Ah! I'll see you there. Exposing my early morning face, but um, I forgot my melatonin too. And it's usually very important to help me sleep, so I didn't go to bed until after two. <laughs> now it's six But I didn't go see space stuff today. <laughs> All right, here is outfit for day one. Um, I don't know, it's cute, it's comfy. We're gonna play the game of how frizzy is my hair gonna get, and uh, I'm putting my bet on very frizzy. There's already much more volume than there was when I landed last night, so that's great. Let's go get coffee. I am on the East Coast. I think it's legally required that I get Duncan, um, because that's the East Coast thing, right? Let's go run in circles for like half an hour, um, trying to find the entrance, but I'm here. I'm in a line of cards, so that's promising. Update in the bathroom. Everybody's introducing themselves. They are incredible people, and my hair is frizzier. Look at my badge. the media center where we're going to watch the launch. You have the countdown clock over there and back there somewhere is, aha, there it is. There's the rocket. You have the vehicle assembly building right there. It's so much exciting stuff happening here. I, I can't believe I'm here. So I am now in the vehicle assembly building. This is where they have assembled the Apollo Saturn V rockets, the space shuttle, and most recently, the SLS. It's a huge building and it's so cool to be in here. We just got to meet and listen to Bill Nelson and Pam Melroy, the administrator and deputy administrator of NASA, both astronauts. Uh, what, what is my, so cool, so inspiring, and I'll share a little bit about what they said in the following clips. This is the Artemis generation. We had the Apollo generation. And look what that did. Out of Apollo came two generations of mathematicians and engineers and scientists. And now we're going to a whole new generation, Artemis. But we've learned a lot. So I flew three times on the shuttle. Bill flew uh, once on the shuttle himself and did a lot of science. And one of the things that we have learned is that it is a part of our mission that when we're doing things that no one has done before, to have a diverse set of perspectives on the team. And just think, as we go back to the moon, and as we now don't touch down and leave, 
we're going back to stay. I'm personally excited. Uh, it gets me choked up sometimes thinking about the first woman landing on the moon. <laughs> how I felt as a little girl, uh, I just think it's going to be extraordinary. And the same thing is going to happen when we have the first person of color. And this is not going to be complicated for us. We have a very diverse astronaut office. We really almost didn't need to say it. It was just going to happen. Uh, so, so that's exciting, I think, all, all in and of itself. All of this in preparation to go to Mars. Another thing that's really different is you're seeing NASA's leadership bring along the international collaboration. You know, they're setting up an infrastructure, an architecture that invites us to expand from here. Like this is very much a beginning. What you're seeing is like the foundations of what the international community can now build upon. And you don't actually know what's coming. We don't know what's coming. And the first recollection I have of space is that one moment in the 70s. I was young. I have no recollection of Apollo, but that one moment where the Soviet Union and the United States dug two spacecraft together into a single spacecraft, and the astronauts went back and forth and hugged each other in space, connected by technology. I thought that was enormously powerful. Of course, it's about rockets, it's about spacecraft, it's about looking at the universe in a new way, it's looking at the moon and, and learning how to live in places we've never been there. But it's also about taking the human condition and bringing it to a higher level. And kind of do things that is truly good by working hard and working together as teams. So yes, you see the rocket, yes, you see the technology, but you see the amazing power of people coming together that's doing something that's really, really hard. And that is what hope is all about. Well, that's a wrap on day one. I am so tired. The four hours of sleep caught up to me about an hour ago. So um, I'm currently in line for McDonald's because I am planning on getting some food and then collapsing in my hotel room. But today was kind of ridiculously incredible like getting to see the assembly building getting to see the rocket getting to go to where we're gonna watch the launch and then meeting so many amazing people the director and deputy director of nasa the like head of kennedy the head of science for nasa so many astronauts so many amazing science and industry people involved in the artemis launch uh, really really amazing but my brain hasn't processed it because I'm too hungry and tired. So I'm going to take care of that. And, um, and, and then, yeah, tomorrow is another day. NASA social day two. This is the fit today. We are going for the super nerd look featuring my new Artemis hat. But really, this is just for humidity control because yesterday my hair exploded. So we're just going to try to keep it hidden today. All right, this we're on the bus and headed to wherever we're heading this morning. I think it's to see the rocket. Right there in the water. <laughs> So we're already behind schedule today. The bus is getting checked by the canine right now. And then hopefully we are going to get to go see a bunch more stuff. But it's always fun to see the vehicle assembly building. This, this launch pad you see out here on the right hand side, this is where they're going to launch their big rocket off of. So there's the rocket. Here's an amazing sign with like all of the missions. And there's Artemis 1. Here is the SLS. Oh my gosh, this thing is huge. This is the crawler. This moves rockets from the vehicle assembly building out to their launch pad. So it's huge. I 
I was that kid, started saying I wanted to be an astronaut when I was five years old. And I grew up in a small town in the middle of nowhere in northern Maine. I didn't know any astronauts, I didn't know anything about NASA, but I had that dream. And I think if you identify that passion and then you really work hard and you, know, you persevere, I think that the biggest thing to me is that you need to remember to be willing to take a risk and that along with those risks that you probably will and should fail, right? Because that's when we learn the, the most valuable lessons. And, and I wish that I had known as a child and I would say to the young people out there is the only limits you have are the ones you place on yourself. And if you don't believe that you can do it, then you're never going to do it. And don't allow other people to tell you no. Don't let them put the limits on what you believe and what you think is possible. Um, but what all astronauts have in common is this fear of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. We try to do our best, but we are doing Because we're so, we have so much responsibility and we're so fortunate to be the ones that get to go to space. And we don't want to disappoint anybody people out there in the public that are funding this mission, you know? So it's, our biggest fear is really just making a mistake. You're going around the Earth every 90 minutes, and you're seeing the beauty of the planet every chance you can get to any window or anywhere on the space station. And it's new every day because the weather took the lights at the time of day. And so it's just this big, beautiful marvel. And in 90 minutes, you've got around the entire of humanity recorded to you in history. And that's just it's something very humbling. And to be living in that element every day, and, you know, feeling that blessed to, to be there, it's tough to leave. Nailed it. So social is over. I am now going to head into the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center and just kind of have some fun here. Um, we have to be back here at two in the morning for launch prep stuff. So um, I'm trying to debate whether I'm gonna actually sleep tonight or not. It'll depend on how much time I spend here. But it's a pretty cool entrance. Go do the space shuttle experience. One of the big things that the space shuttle program was able to accomplish was Hubble. Okay, well, I got some goodies because I'm a easily snookered person. And, uh, whew, wait, food, I'm getting food, going back to the hotel. Okay, well, it is 5.30, I'm back in my hotel. Um, don't mind the sweaty mess, that is my everything. But I don't really know what to do now. I think I'm going to turn on the TV and set an alarm. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. Otherwise, I'm waking up at midnight anyways to go watch a rocket launch. What? Okay, cool. Bye. All right, editing Skylar here. And as we go into day three of this experience, as you probably know, the rocket did not end up launching. And so what you're about to watch is my descent into sleep deprived delirium. Uh, just, just a heads up. Well, it is now 9.30, so sleep is not happening. I am watching the VMAs because that's what's on TV and listening to a downpour outside, which I would really like to wrap up quickly. Okay, it is 11 p.m. now. This is sideways. I went live for a while and now I am, um, I, I had coffee, so yeah. let's see how this goes. Oh, it is launch day. I am getting some gas, hopping off the tank, and then we are en route. It is almost one in the morning and I didn't sleep, so yeah. All right, I'm checked in. I am in a line of cars and we are going to go onto the base in like 10 minutes. So far, everything is good. The lightning dissipated. They are pulling it up right now. So I'm standing here back in front of the vehicle assembly building. It is four in the morning. So we are T minus four and a half hours until launch. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, so the rocket is back 
right there. That's a rocket. So, uh, four and a half hours to kill, and I'll check back in with you later. The sun is rising. Oh I am so tired. <laughs> But we're gonna get through this. All right, so we are now officially after the original launch time. Um, essentially what is going on is there's an issue with one of the engines. Uh, it's not getting fuel flowing in fast enough. So in this building right there, I just spilled water all over myself. That's the launch control center. And in there, engineers and the NASA directors are talking about what can be done. Now, there's that issue, and then there's also this issue. You see this big thunderstorm that's moving north towards the rocket? Yeah, that's a problem. So essentially, the other fun thing that's happening is that nobody has any Wi-Fi or data usage. So we can't see if any announcements have been made because nobody can connect to the internet. So there's my update from launch day. At this point, I just want to go to sleep. So if we could um, head out and, and get to the hotel, that'd be cool. But we don't know officially if it's been scrubbed or not. So still hanging around. You know what though? This has been really cool. I mean, that is the launch control center. The AB, the actual rocket is over there somewhere. And it's official. We've, we've, got, we've got a scrub on our hands and um, Artemis 1 will still launch, just not today, and I won't be around to see it. I present to you the sad walk back to the bus. What? That's what it is! Alright, so I am rested, I took a nap, and I'm gonna go to a beach. Because I'm in Florida, I'm not wearing my watch, but I've got time. So we're gonna go do that, enjoy the last bit of Florida. leaving the beach. What a day. And we're back in the hotel and that is a wrap. Um, I've got to clean up everything and I'm gonna watch TV for a while and then go to bed. Well, I am home. What an amazing weekend. Even though the launch didn't happen, I had such a great time, got to see so many things, meet so many people. I am just honored and thankful that I got to do this. I also just wanna say thank you because I got invited to this because I have a social media presence and you're the reason why I have a social media presence. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'm so glad I got to share this with you and hopefully Artemis will launch soon.